We've covered a handful of small electric vehicles on this channel so far. Some have been pretty cool and somewhat practical. Others have been cool and completely impractical. And others have just been terrible. But none of them are nearly as practical as a common garden variety bicycle. And that's because bicycles are fast, efficient, reliable, easy to repair, and cheap. That's why I've been riding bikes for over 20 years. And that's why I've been so anxious to try the Rad Wagon, an electric cargo bike from Rad Power Bikes. It's got most of the advantages that come from being a bicycle, but it's also got a 750 watt motor. Corsair boasts unrivaled comfort and universal compatibility on its Void Surround headset, featuring a genuine Dolby 7.1 headphone USB adapter. Click the link in the video description to learn more. The Radwagon has a 21-speed gearing system, wide all-terrain tires, no shocks, mechanical disc brakes, an LCD display with lots of information, and plastic fenders, mud flaps, and clear wheel guards for the cargo area. It's a long-tail bike, and it's heavy at 75 pounds, so you won't be doing any tight maneuvers. There's a rear light powered by double A's, but the front light runs off the main battery. The beam is pretty narrow and not super bright, but it will always shine even if you run out of power for the motor. Assembly of the Rad Wagon is pretty easy if you have a decent set of tools. The ones in the box are just okay. And there's a YouTube video to help you out. Just don't put the handlebars on backwards like I did and you'll be fine. And while you're at it, please read the manuals. Among the other very useful information, you'll find safety warnings like the one about not putting the seat post too high, which I didn't read and accidentally bent part of the frame and needed our neighbor Steve to help fix it. Again, be sure to read both manuals cover to cover or you won't get the best experience. I guarantee it. At the heart of the Rad Wagon is a seven pound lithium ion battery with a whopping 566 watt hour capacity. It even has an onboard 5 volt USB port, so you could recharge an iPhone about 70 times. But this battery's true purpose is to power the direct drive hub motor. It's gearless, brushless, very quiet, and runs at 48 volts with a peak output of 750 watts, the maximum allowed by law in the United States. That's a lot of torque, and let me tell you, this thing kicks. But only to a point. Out of the box, the Radwagon has a factory set speed limit of 20 miles an hour. That's as fast as you can legally go on an electric bike using a throttle only before US law classifies your vehicle as a moped, for which you would require a license. According to Strava, great app by the way, I average about 12 miles an hour on my Cannondale road bike. Compare that to 18 miles an hour average on the Radwagon, 50% faster. That's respectable, especially considering that the Rad Wagon wasn't even built for speed. It's a cargo bike, one that's capable of hauling a whopping 350 pounds. That's what this huge amount of rack space is for. There's enough room for four standard pannier bike bags or two of Rad Wagon's Ballard bags, though I did not like the Ballard bags for several reasons, worst of which is the pathetic attachment mechanism that has me fumbling with the clips like I'm in an infomercial. Fortunately, you can use any bike bag compatible with the rack's three-quarter inch tubing. And there's even more room on the wooden deck and running boards. You can carry groceries, boxes, lumber, and even people, as long as they weigh less than 120 pounds. But don't tell that to your girlfriend. So that's great, but just how much range can you get on a single charge? Well, that depends. Rad Power Bikes says you can expect a range from anywhere between 20 and 40 miles depending upon factors like speed, weight, terrain, and how hard you're pedaling. I've ridden this bike for more than 200 miles over the past two months, with a mix of long and short trips, but I've never gotten farther than 30 miles on a single charge, even on perfectly flat terrain. To test the lower boundary, I loaded up the Rad Wagon with 350 pounds and biked around on pedal assist mode three until the battery depleted. I expected to go about 10 miles, but the bike didn't make 10 miles it made 20. And shockingly, it didn't give up much performance either, easily reaching above 15 miles an hour throughout my torture test, and it even handled a very steep downhill without losing stability at 30 miles an hour. You can't do that on a boosted board. 
This absolutely blew me away. And so did the results of my new, real-world test, the Office to Costco benchmark, where the Radwagon turned in the best performance of a non-gas-powered vehicle, losing to a car by only two and a half minutes. And this bike gets a lot of attention from people. I get stares, compliments, and questions about the Radwagon all the time. Love that color, man. But it's not all good news. The Radwagon does have a few problems and odd quirks. In addition to the mechanical disc brakes, the bike also has a regenerative brake, which is fantastic, but it does not always engage, even though it is supposed to. However, I've found that I can force it to engage by twisting the throttle and then depressing the brake lever. There's also another USB port on the LCD display, but it doesn't always work. I really like pedal assist mode for long journeys, but it's not great for stop and go travel because it requires about a half to a three quarter turn of the pedals before it kicks in. And it takes almost a second to disengage after you stop pedaling. That's more of a delay than I would like. Out of the box, the rear derailleur was not properly aligned and the disc brakes also rubbed quite a bit. Also, the back wheel went pretty far out of true during my 350 pound torture test. I got the derailleur, brakes, and wheel fixed at my local bike shop, where the mechanic told me that every single spoke on the back wheel was loose. So make sure you check for that before you do any riding. But when the rad wagon was in the shop, I really missed having it around. Riding this e-bike helped me remember why I love biking in the first place. And I went on much longer trips that I would otherwise have done by car. I forgot I even had a car. And that's really what the Radwagon is all about. It's a vehicle somewhere between a car and a bike. And considering that about half of all car trips are less than five miles, owning a bike, or an e-bike for those longer, heavier trips, makes a lot of sense. Now, if you don't know much about electric bikes, it may surprise you to learn that at $1,700, the Radwagon is a value option. At this price, with these features, I could not find a better cargo e-bike. Seriously, if you know of one, leave it in the comments below. But the main deciding factor for a purchase like this should be one of practicality. Don't buy something like this unless you know you're going to use it. Make sure that biking is already a part of your life, and then you can take it to the next level with an e-bike like the Radwagon. By the way, if you don't want this much cargo space, they also have the Rad Rover and the Rad Mini. The Rad Wagon is fun, fast, practical, versatile, and it's a great value. You could even call it Rad. It's not perfect, but honestly, my biggest concern is that it might get stolen. Great job, Rad Power Bikes, for setting the bar so high. I'll be riding this bike for a very long time iFixit.com is your complete DIY electronics repair solution. From their 19,000 free step-by-step -step repair guides to their huge inventory of replacement parts and tools with lifetime warranty, iFixit has got your repair needs covered. Today we're talking about their latest and greatest, the all-new ProTech Toolkit. The design has been completely reimagined, but it's just as rugged and portable as before. It includes the new 64-bit driver kit, which replaces the former 54-bit driver kit. This one's got a more durable case and magnets to hold all your little screws and stuff in place. The 64-bit kit itself is held to the tool roll using magnets, as is the shell cover. More bits means fewer repair roadblocks, and they've got a newly designed swivel top precision driver. There's also a flex extension for hard to reach screws, precision ED safe tweezers, and a pair of reverse tweezers. There's a wider variety of plastic opening tools and picks to safely work on tablets and smartphones and whatever else, and a suction cup for display assembly removal. There's metal spoogers, spudgers, whatever, and iFixit's own rubber-handled Jimmy Pry tool and ESD-safe strap to make sure you don't destroy your work with static shock. The price on the ProTech Toolkit has increased to $69.95, and the best part is it's backed by iFixit's lifetime warranty. Buy it because it's awesome, or don't, and you'll still get access to all the free repair resources on iFixit.com. Grab an all-new ProTech Toolkit and get going on your next fix, hack, or build. Just head over to ifixit.com slash Linus and use code LTT at checkout to save $5 on your purchase of $10 or more. Thanks for watching, everybody, and give us a like or a dislike, depending on how you feel. There's a subscribe button somewhere that you should press if you haven't pressed it already. And check out one of my other electric vehicle reviews, the Flycly SmartPad, which is 
Well, it was super disappointing and terrible, and um, I'm glad that there are good electric vehicles that exist. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can buy stuff on Amazon, but not the Rad Wagon. You gotta order it directly from Rad Power Bikes. And uh, see you next time.